All right, so let's begin today, module three, lesson two. We're going to talk about a few things today, variables, input and output, and broadcast. Now, I know some of you have already sort of played around with this, probably figured it out, but maybe there's a couple things I can show you that you didn't know. So if I ask you this, what is the x in this equation? I think you know the answer is four, four right? And the answer is only four. And the x would be referred to as a variable. The x is four and only four. But x can stand for many values, because in another equation, x might be 3 or 47 or, or whatever, right? The x is called a variable because its value can vary or change. Okay? Now, these are useful in um, programs, games, what have you, right? Variables are basically everything, okay? Um, you can't really do any of the old school programs. Uh, you start with, like, one of the first things you learn is variables. We didn't start with that here because... It's a graphical kind of thing, and so we don't really need them. Some of you have played around with this already. What are you guys back there at the time going already, right? Dallas? Okay. So variables used to keep track of things in a program or game, things like the time, the score, cost, value, names, uh, things you've collected along the way, high scores, low scores, everything. Everything that needs to be sort of kept track of or recorded is stored in a variable, okay? There are many ways to store data. The basic variable is the most basic way there is. And after that, then you get into what are called arrays, two-dimensional arrays, pointers, and all sorts of data structures. In fact, I took a course in university that was strictly data structures. Sounds boring. OK, so I would like you to find the program that you saved as base game. And under the variable block, which is bottom right hand corner, I'd like you to make a variable and call it time and use it for all sprites. You should Okay, so I've already done it here, so you need to make a variable, call it time, and click for all sprites. Now, the all sprites or some sprites, that's what's referred to as the scope of the variable. Okay, the scope of the variable. Does that variable, is it global, which means everyone gets to see it, or is it specifically just for a single sprite? Can only the cat see that variable? Some variables you want to be global, you want everybody to see. Some variables you want to be specific about just that one there. Okay? So like each sprite can have its own time, and it would show have a different value. It would have the same name, but it would be different. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like you guys all share the same school, DRCSS, but your classes are different, right? So same kind of idea. A global variable would be like your school, your town, right? That kind of thing. Uh, a very local variable would be one that is just for you, your specific timetable. Okay. So you should have gotten made up that variable called time. You have to make sure that the checkbox is selected and the time will appear on the stage. You have to make sure that there's a little checkbox beside the variable time. And what that does is, is it shows the time right there. If I uncheck time, it disappears. See how it disappeared there? So some variables you're going to want to see on the stage, and some variables you're not going to want to see. Things like time and score, that kind of thing, right? Other more internal um, variables, you don't want to see them. No, I'd say yes, I get that. Yes, I get that. <laughs> if you ch add your scratch sprite, add this to the scratch sprite, this little bit of script, it also loops until it touches the other sprite, and it keeps a running clock on how long it takes you to catch the ball. So you need to add this little bit of script to your base game that says when the flag is clicked, Go to zero, zero, set the time equal to zero, repeat until we're touching sprite two, wait a second, and then change the time by one. So in other words, every second, make the time go up by one. I'll stop there and let you get that ready. Is that on the screen? Okay, so you should have got that going as well. Now I'm going to show you something different here. Okay? Uh, input and output is also a big, big thing in computer science. Um, and, I mean, anytime you're playing an Xbox game or a Wii game or anything like that, even on a PC, you have to be able to control the, the character, right? That's all done by input, whether it's a joystick or a 
what have you, right? Keyboard numbers, arrow keys, whatever, right? So we can use an input statement as well in Scratch. And this gets information from the user. And the Scratch command is ask, okay? Typically, it's some um, version of the word input in, in uh, Scratch. It's the word ask. So it might ask, what's your name? And then wait, okay? So the ask part asks the question in the box. And whatever is typed is stored as the variable answer, okay? It's a default goes to answer, the answer to the question, okay? And then can be changed to another variable, which is kind of weird, um, but that's the way Scratch works. When we do Liberty Basic, it's a little bit different, but I'll show that to you then. So you might say something like, ask what's your name and wait, and then set name to answer, okay? And then you can use answer for the next question, right? So answer is the default. You have to. You almost always are going to have an ask and then a set back to back kind of thing. Okay. So set name to answer. So then you can use the variable in the script. So you can ask the person that's playing, "What's your name?" and then you can use that a little bit later. Kind of thing. Have you found those yet on your uh, right on your scratch here? So you would. Uh, is that under sensing? Yes, it is. So you would ask, "What's your name?" and wait. And then you would, under variables, I uh, need to make a variable, call it name. Okay. And you would set name to answer. Uh, where is that? Probably under variable. Yes. Set name to answer. Okay, so it would be something like that. Okay, and you can see that if you click here in the set command, you're going to get all the different uh, variables that you've set up. I've got name, time, and I've also got total time. You're going to get to that uh, right away. So you can set the name to answer, and you can use that block somewhere in your script. Okay, and you can say the name. That's the output. Quinn has a question. Uh, yeah, you don't need it up there. You're right. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily need to be up there. Okay. So that's the input portion of input and output. Okay. In Scratch, there's a few different ways you can output. One of them is to say, okay, you can do something like this. You can say, and then you can join the word hello with your name. So it's going to say, hello, Hannah, hello. Jason, hello, Brandon, or whatever, right? Joins those two together. You could use it in another statement like ask how many stars to catch and wait. Set number of stars to answer, and then you could repeat until the number of stars equals the number of stars caught. Okay? You can use these variables for keeping track of things as well. Okay? Um, I didn't tell you about the other thing that Scratch allows you to do is allows you to Think as well. Think is another form of output. Okay, so you can either uh, say, and it looks, yes, you can either say hello, which looks like that, or you can think something, which looks like that. Really not any different, right? Just a little different look to it, right? Think is the, the little you know, thought bubbles, and say hello is with the arrow. Okay. okay. Broadcasts. Broadcasts are a really neat little feature. We're gonna, you're gonna see these in Liberty Basic as well. They're not quite near as exciting. We call them flags. Okay. A flag or an indicator. A flag. Flag just means that something happened, and so you put a flag up. Right. You, you, you wave the flag and you say, hey, something happened. And it means go do something else, right? So something like a broadcast, you would broadcast all balls caught. When all the balls have been collected, you would say, hey, everybody, all the balls have been caught. Let's go now to the next step, right? So it's a flag. It's like, we're all done. It's like a whistle, right? So this allows a message to go out to all sprites that something, like all the balls are caught or the time is up or that kind of thing, that tells you that you are to do something new. Something like stop the script, maybe stop all scripts, okay? You might want to flash done, 
or something like that, right? So it's just a way of getting a message out. You would broadcast all balls caught, and then this is the start of the next phase when I receive all balls caught. So the flag goes up, something happened, all the balls are caught, and then someone else, some other script says, oh, when I receive that message, when I see the flag go up, then that means go do this. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So here is module three, assignment two. So take your assignment, the one that you may or may not have completed, not the base game. We're just messing around with that, okay? Not the base game. Here's uh, what I need to see in your new assignment. Make a timer to record how long it takes to catch the ball. Create a second variable that records the number of balls left to catch. Ask the user how many balls they want to catch. Okay, you get five marks for that. So rather than just catching one ball, you're going after maybe 10 or 15 or something, rather. Have the balls start in random positions. Wait two seconds before the next ball appears. Show the number of balls left to catch. Have a big celebration when the 10th ball is caught. Okay, uh, five marks for that. Sound, pictures, animations, use a broadcast for that. Okay, so in other words, game over. There's a fair bit going on there. Okay, make sure you don't, I, the assignment there is on the back of that page, so you should be able to follow along there. Uh, a little bonus here, determine the total time for all 10 balls along with individual times for each ball. You can do that. Okay, so there's lots of things you can try there. I'm going to give you today's Wednesday at the absolute minimum tomorrow and Friday for that. Some of you will power right through it. Okay, some of you might take another week. That's okay. <laughs>